Hello, this is Hellbent again, and welcome to the fourth and final video in the variable topic for our, my auto hotkey tutorial series. Um, we're just going to continue on. We're not going to try not to waste any time because some of these are a little bit more complicated than the variable operators that we've been using up until now. So we went through divide in uh, this one up here, and it's it's pretty simple to understand, but there's a few different things you can do with division, and one of them is, another one is floor divide, and what floor divide is, is it's only going to print out a value or store the value of uh, how many times something goes into something evenly. So if there's any remainder left over, it's going to throw that value away. So for example, 5 goes into 11 twice. 5 and then the remainder would be 1 and it's just going to throw that 1 away. So it's just going to store the value of 2 which is how many times it goes into it evenly. The best way to look at this is we're just going to give some examples. So we're going to use our colon equals operator again and we're just going to say um, let's do what we had said. So 11 divided by 5 is going to give us a value of 2 point something 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 something. If we want to know only how many times it goes into it evenly, we would use the other operator, our floor divide operator. And it's pretty much the exact same, except we're going to use two slashes instead of just one. And this is only going to give us how many times it goes into it evenly. And then the last one is a special function, and it's called mod, and then in brackets we use our dividend and our divisor, so we have 11, 5, and what this is going to do is it's only going to store the remainder. So in this case it threw out the remainder, in this case it's going to throw out everything except for the remainder. And we'll just print it out, msg, b, O X, and I'm not going to bother making it look fancy this time, so I'm just going to print out our variables, but I will do a new line. Print out the variable, new line. Okay, just to speed things up a little bit. A, B, C. Alright, we'll save our changes and have a look. So remember what I said they do. Um... Oh, I forgot the equals. Save and run. Okay. So there we go. So like I said, this first one up here, it is going to give us two point something. The next one, it's going to throw out anything that's not where it went, wasn't even. And the last one is only going to throw out the remainder. So if you look up here, like I said, 5 is going to go into 11 twice with a remainder of 1. So it's going to only, this one's only going to show the twice, or the two, and then this one's only going to show the remainder. Play around with it a little bit, put in some different values, plug in some different values, and then print them out. Moving on. Okay, these ones are special ones. So... Let's go, when we had gone over naming, I had said that we sometimes want to use counting variables. So let's say our i, and we're going to declare our i equals 0 to begin with. And then we're going to set up a loop. And we're going to loop it. Now, we're not always going to know how many times we're going to be going through our loop. Sometimes there's going to be a condition inside of the loop that if it's met, it's going to stop our loop. But for this, sim for this example, we're going to make it as simple as possible, and we're just going to set it at 10. So it's going to loop 10 times, and then that's it. And then inside of our loop, we're going to say i++, plus plus, which basically means add 1 to the value of i each time it runs through. So at the begin with, the first time it's going to be 0. It's going to come here, and it's going to add 1 to that value, so i now equals 1. And then it's going to go through again, i equals 2. And to show this, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple message boxes. So m, 
So the first one's going to print the value of i as it is to begin with. And then inside of the loop, after each time it adds to the value, we're going to print it out again. Okay, and we'll just run this. So to begin with, our value of i is 0. And then it goes into the loop and it's going to add 1 to the value of i, so our next value should be 1. And it is. And then it's going to run through it again and add it again. It's 3 all the way up to 10. So we've incremented, added 1 to the value of i. If we change this with minus minus, or sub, what we're going to end up with is it's going to subtract 1 from the value of i each time it runs through the loop. And if we look... We start off at our 0, it goes through, and we have negative 1, negative 2, all the way down to negative 10, and then it's done. Okay, the other ones, the plus equals and minus equals, if I was to write i colon equals i plus, let's say, 5, it's the exact same as if I just said i plus equals 5. It means the exact same thing. So this basically means that I'm going to take i and add i with 5 together. So i is going to equal the old value of i plus 5. And we can put this into our loop. So we'll just do i plus equals 5. We'll get rid of these two lines here because they're just demonstration. And we'll see how this works. So it equals 0, and now it's going to add 5 to that value. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 50, and then it's done. The same thing with the minus, except it's going to subtract that value from it each time. So we have 0, negative 5, all the way down to negative 50. But like I said, we're not always going to know how many times it's going to actually go through our loop. So this, these counting variables are very useful for that. Okay, play around with that and we will continue on. Okay, the last thing you're probably likely never to actually have to use, but if you know anything about computers, all everything is stored as a bunch of zeros and ones. So for example, in binary, this is in binary, or base two numbers. This is the same as writing 15. So this first one on the right-hand side is the ones place. So if there's a one in that spot, it's got a value of one. If there's a zero there, it has a value of zero. The next spot over has a value of either zero or two. The next spot over has a value of four, or 0 and the last spot has a value of 8 or 0 and then if we had another spot it would be 16 the next spot over would be 32 then 64 then 128 and so on and so forth so that's base 2 numbers so with this operator here what we're going to be doing is shifting the place of these these ones so we're either going to shift all of these ones to the left or to the right and the way we do that is we'll just say a equals and we're gonna leave this very simple so we're gonna take our number 15 and we're gonna shift it to the right one space and what this is gonna do is we had currently we have a value of one 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 but we're gonna shift our ones one space to the right so what we're gonna end up with as new value is zero in that first spot and then that and the last one is going to go poof into non-existence and our new value is going to be seven because if we take the first digit has a value of one the second one has a value of two so one plus two equals three the third digit has a value of four so we have four plus two plus one gives us seven we'll do one more example with left shift and we'll start off with a value of 15 again and we're going to right shift, left shift at 1. 
this time what we're going to end up with is all of our ones are going to be shifted over one spot which is going to give us a zero at the end okay and we're going to end up with a new value of 30 because we have a zero in the one spot a one in the two spot a one in the so okay so this spot here it's the first one its value is 16 the next value is 8 4 2 so we have 16 plus 8 gives us 24 plus 4 gives us 28 plus 2 gives us 30 okay and this we can shift it as many places as we want I'm using one because it's the easiest to visualize well, oh I didn't actually do a message box once again I'm just gonna do a simple message box I'm not gonna put uh, the name of the variable in it I'm just gonna do print it out Oops. and we have exactly as I said so play around with this get figure out what it's going on with it and that's it for this there's still other things that we have to learn about um, variables but there's no point in bringing them up until we've actually covered the subjects that they pertain to so for example if statements loops and etc etc there's a bunch of other things that we need to learn with them but we'll introduce them as they come up for the subjects that's it for this uh, tutorial have a good day